just before we start, this is my first time trying this, and it's not nearly as noble as what Troy just did. I feel terrible about this. You know what the ending is now, so the climax is going to be tough to keep under wraps. Um, before we start, I'm Scott Coates. I'm originally from Calgary, Canada. That's on the western part near the Rocky Mountains. I've been here almost 14 years, and this is my first Pachacucha, and this one's much lighter than the other one. All right, so I was a bartender and a DJ when I was in university, and I studied radio broadcasting, and then I did journalism, and I was this close to becoming a TV news guy, and I had a drunken flash at one moment, a shoddy Jägermeister, and I decided to move here in September 1999 with this guy on the bottom left, my friend Daniel Fraser. We went to high school together. He has a Thai television show on PBS, but we had $2,000 each and said, let's start a travel company that'll be for people that would never do a tour and want to be with kind of people from where they're from. Show them around with a lot of hospitality and the real insider's edge. So why didn't we come to Thailand? Well, my business partner had worked for the royal family here. Um, Thai people are super friendly, it's safe, great food. But another thing is, while it's exotic and developing, there's great health center and good transport infrastructure. And short flights, people can have three aspects. They can have the Asian megacity, mountain culture, and great beaches. So everyone always said to me when I was doing this at all, so all you do is travel and sit on beaches and whatnot. For the first six or seven years, I did do a lot of that. I probably hosted five to 600 people throughout the country. I did plan a lot of our trips in Cambodia, Thailand, Nepal, so I would spend time in the field, but then it grew into more of an office type job and the whole thing shifted. So people would always say, what's the worst customer you've had? What's the stupidest thing? Well, there isn't actually many, but you do get tired of being asked, will it rain tomorrow when we've all been away for internet for 24 hours? I don't know. Um, and the general thing is we pick up lost items and it seems the smartest person in the world, put them traveling, they lose about 40 IQ points, and we are pros in picking things up. So why is Thailand so appealing? And this ties into me and why I'm doing this tonight. Odd things. And when I first moved here, I met this eccentric old British man named Jeffrey. And my first month, I said, Jeffrey, why do you like living in Thailand? And he said, you know, it's because every day I leave my house, I never know what I'm going to see. And it wasn't until just five weeks ago that I got it, because I suddenly left Thailand. So about a year ago, I went on a retreat and I took five months off, came back and worked, and then I sold my shares to my business partner. My wife got offered a job in Malaysia, and all of a sudden, five weeks ago, my life here was over. I left travel and had a huge shift and was nervous, and I realized I've just left my whole personality, everything I know. And it got me reflecting. I thought, what have I really loved about being here? What are the great things? And definitely people came out number one easy. It's that Mike and Lai attitude. Sometimes it drives us crazy, but Mike and Lai is a wonderful way to go through life. Respect of elders and this undying curiosity of foreigners. People have been coming here for 20, 30 years in masses and they're still amazed and friendly. Some things are never going to make sense, no matter how long you're here. Like, why do cops wear such tight outfits and why do two men ride a small motorbike? Who is working those traffic lights? I still don't know. And why does a 7-Eleven on my street turn into a playground? And I'm the only one that thinks it's odd. So one of the biggest things working in this industry did for me was kind of made me open to possibilities. I'm still not good at being open to things, but as we traveled, we ended up having these opportunities to do reach out programs and stuff I'd never done in Canada and never thought about, but I got into it by accident. It's been the best part of being in Thailand and being the best part in this business. So when did I realize I was a local? I remember about seven years ago, I was on a 10K motorbike ride reading a book, and towards the end, I realized, man, I didn't even watch the road, like, I'm reading a book. When you order ice with your beer most of the time, you're probably local. And when I stopped being shocked to see a pretty girl on a resume, but having a man's name, I also realized that as well. <laughs> so things I'll miss, I really think Bangkok's got this cool combo of old and traditional mixed with modern conveniences. And somehow, it just all blends seamlessly, and that's really neat to have day to day. And then the Thai food. I've been gone five weeks, and Malay food is great, but Thai food is the best, it's everywhere, it's tasty, I love it. So you know you're a Bangkokian when these are things I've done. Milk, pancake, and golf aren't things and, and food products of your friends. You wear a bag on your head when it rains. 
You can actually win points by taking bugs home to your girlfriend. I've actually done that. And I pop my pimples in the elevator with everyone in the elevator with me. I'm not shy. <laughs> only in Thailand. There's lots of only here things. But the soy dogs with t-shirts is awesome. Like People can ignore them all year. But when it gets a little chilly, they get the t-shirts on people. Or on dogs, I'm sorry. And then inappropriate products. My favorite product, black man cleaning products. Only could this happen in Thailand. You can still buy them. And it's just one of those things. So stuff I've learned along the way, lots of things. Don't try and change Thailand, let it change you. I was guilty of complaining for a long time about weird things, but just embrace those things. And if you find you're complaining too long, probably time to go. Do not eat an ice cream on a motorbike taxi, it blows all over you. And don't expect to understand what it all means, because you never will. So why did I love life in Thailand and what am I leaving behind? Well, getting anywhere at any time is possible. Yeah, there's traffic here, but you go early or you go in the city, you can always get a truck or a motorbike or a boat. You eat at a table with a multi-millionaire and a construction worker. It's a great hub for traveling. And man, ties are easy going. You want to sleep? Have a nap. <laughs> so I'm definitely a better person, and I still have a lot of work to do on these areas. But things that I've changed as a person and that are great, try not to worry about stuff you can't control. Try and smile more, which I'm still not good at. There is that I hate your gut smile, so just do that if you don't like someone. Control my temper, and again, the whole night and lie thing is fantastic. People often say that I met that just moved here, what should I do? And I think Thai script. It's not that hard to learn. And once you know Thai script, the whole country is your classroom. You can read the signs. It's a big one. Get fluent. I never got fluent. And a lot of foreigners, I find myself included, never had those great Thai friends. And you can only get so deep without it. So that's what I would have done. So, I realized I'm kind of upset, I'm kind of figuring it all out, but this is going to be tougher for me to leave, I think, because I didn't have a 9 to 5 job, I traveled lots of the country, I got to know the history intimately, a lot of weird corners, and even something like the canals. I really, like, I biked on them, I ran on them, and those were things for me that were really deep and will only be here. So here's the secret shot at the end, isn't it staggering? Parting shots. This is a wonderful country, and it's, I think all of us should realize the great thing, I don't think there's any country on earth you could come to and be yourself and do your thing with no one really being angry at you for it. That's a great thing. At the end of the day, I totally see now why every day you leave, you never know what you're going to see. So thank you, Thailand, and uh, you're all up to you.